Today on CityCast Philly, the results are in. We're talking about the winners of Philly's 2023 primary election. Lead producer Laura Benchoff and producer Abby Fritz are joining me and my many cups of coffee to talk about what we know so far. It's Wednesday, May 17th. I'm Trinae Nuri, and here's what Philly's talking about. Good morning, <laughs> Laura and Abby. How y'all doing? Ooh, good morning, beautiful team. Good morning. Thanks for being up so early. <laughs> yeah. Y'all, we've been up uh, since about 3.30, 4 a.m., reading the results of the Phillies primary election. Obviously, we've got we've got coffee on deck. <laughs> we've got water. How y'all feeling about this? I'm feeling good. I'm feeling ready for now. We'll see how I feel in an hour, but <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, surprisingly energized. The caffeine is doing its job at this moment. Awesome. All right. I'm actually, I'm I'm glad that we have a projected winner, y'all, because I thought it was going to be a very, very, very close. A lot of focus is obviously on the mayor's race. Former city council member Sherelle Parker is the Democratic nominee for mayor, which means she's almost certainly going to be Philly's next mayor. We mm -hmm. heard a little bit of her victory party at the top of the show, uh, but Parker actually didn't attend her party because she's had some health emergency. That's what a spokesperson told the Philadelphia Inquirer. Um, her campaign also tweeted last night, close to midnight, and this is what they said. I'm so incredibly honored to have earned the Democratic nomination tonight. It's been a long road. And to see the tireless work of my campaign team, supporters, and family pay off is humbling. I'm looking forward to November and bringing our city together as its 100th mayor. Yes, and that is true. And the first female mayor, too. That's right. And whoever... Whoever wins the general election will be the city's 100th mayor. Um, and Parker defeated a group of front runners in this very, very crowded race, including former city council members Alan Dom and Helen Gim, as well as former city controller Rebecca Reinhart and businessman Jeff Brown. So in the general election, the ballot will say Sherelle Parker versus Republican candidate David O. But again, Parker is heavily favored to win because there are so many more Democrats in the city than Republicans. And uh, we'll talk more about this on this week's Friday News Roundup. All right. And let's look at another competitive race, city council. So most of the district council seats were uncontested races. So no huge surprises for districts one through six and ten. But in the seventh, eighth and ninth districts, there were challengers on the ballot. But none of these have been officially called yet. So as of right now, these are the results we have in. But there might be updates coming in the hours ahead of us. So right now, Ketsi Lazada is in the lead with about 60 percent of the votes over Andre Celine with 151 of the 162 divisions reported in District 7. In the 8th District, incumbent since 2012, Cindy Bass is defending a challenge from Seth Anderson Overman, but it's still too close to call. They're pretty much essentially tied right now with a slight lead for Bass. And lastly, in District 9, incumbent Anthony Phillips has a solid lead at about 63% of the vote over two others for the seat. Again, all the votes are still being counted in these races, and we'll have a link in our show notes to up-to-date live results. Now, another race uh, that had many names on the ballot was the at-large city council uh, seats. And these members represent the entire city. So voters chose five nominees who will be on the ballot for each party in November. So on the Dems, we have Isaiah Thomas, Catherine Gilmore Richardson, who both are the incumbents, Rue Landau, Nina Ahmed, and Jim Harity. On the Republican side, we have Drew Murray, Frank Cristinzio, Gary Grisafi, Jim Hasher, and Mary Jane Kelly. 
Yeah. And again, those are five people from each party who are going to be on the ballot in November competing for seven at-large seats in the city. And I want to talk a little bit now about the row offices. So those are positions within city government like sheriff, city controller, register of wills, and city commissioners. Some of these races are looking really close. So the sheriff's office, for example, Democratic incumbent Rochelle Bilal faced some challengers. As of 5 a.m. this morning, she is slightly ahead of challenger Michael Undermeyer and far ahead of challenger Jackie Miles for the Democratic nomination. On the Republican side, Mark Lavelle ran uncontested. Now, the city controller's office, which uh, sort of is a watchdog organization within the government, that seat is actually open because former controller Rebecca Reinhart resigned to run for mayor. Right now, Democrat Christy Brady, who worked in the office, is in the lead in that race, and Republican Aaron Bashir ran unopposed for his party's nomination. Now, looking at the register of wills, there is an incumbent, Tracy Gordon, but as of right now, a challenger, Democrat John Sabatina, has a slight lead. That's only about 3,000 votes over Gordon. We'll see what happens as that race evolves, but... um. Whoever wins for the Democratic side, Republican Linwood Holland will be on the ticket for the GOP in November. And finally, in the city commissioner's race, there's not a lot of surprises. This office oversees elections in the county, and all three people running from both parties ran unopposed. So we're going to keep seeing Lisa Dealey and Omar Sabir on the Democratic side and Seth Bluestein for the GOP. <laughs> All right. If you didn't vote in the primary, um, you may have been independent. If you were not a Democrat or Republican, you still were able to participate in voting for the ballot questions. So, Abby, how did the city vote for the ballot questions? So as of right now, voters are on their way to approving all four questions that were asked. It doesn't look like they've officially been called, but it seems like it's leaning pretty positive for all of these questions. So the first question was making changes to the city's rainy day fund. The second was creating a division of workforce solutions within the Commerce Department. The third question was creating a civil service carve out for Citizens Police Oversight Commission. And lastly, question four was creating a public safety officer. Interesting. Let's shift gears and talk about voter turnout, which is really, really interesting in this in these types of races. Right, Laura? Like, yeah. uh, not that many tend people to be, come out to vote. It tends to be very low. And that is what we're seeing this year as well. You know, it's a primary. So you have to be registered to a party to vote. There's no huge ticket, um, you know, bigger stakes race like Senate or president on the ballot. So right, these right. These tend to be low turnout, and that is what we're seeing. You know, as of this morning, according to the Philadelphia City Commissioners, only about 23% of registered voters in the city actually cast a ballot. Um, so if there's about a million registered voters, only about uh, 238,000 people showed up. And if you want to compare just how bad that is, in 2022, that was a big midterm election. About a half million people voted in Philly. And in 2020, the most recent presidential race, it was more than 700,000 people. So there are a lot of people who sometimes do vote in Philly who did not vote in this primary. Um, right. And what's interesting about that, too, is that it means that whoever's picking our next mayor, our likely next mayor, is a pretty small slice of the city, even if you compare this to previous mayoral elections. So, for example, the Philadelphia Inquirer did an analysis earlier this week just looking at how many votes it took to win this exact same race, the Democratic primary for mayor, for the last two mayors. Now, our current mayor, Mayor Jim Kenney, got 130,000 votes, more than that. Before him, Michael Nutter got 106,000. But the person who's the winner this time, Sheryl Parker, only had about 69,000 votes. And what that means is that more people than not voted for someone besides Sheryl Parker. Interesting. So basically the 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 vote got split. Yes, it got split because the race was so crowded and it wasn't that big to begin with. All right. Before we go, we should spend a little bit of time with a couple of important races beyond Philadelphia. That's right. So there's an open seat on the Pennsylvania Supreme Court. 
in that contest, Dan McCaffrey won the Democratic nomination. And on the Republican side, uh, it was Carolyn Carluccio. So they'll be on the ballot in November. And there was one other really interesting race in the Pennsylvania suburbs, um, a state house seat that had been held by Democrats, but where the incumbent had to resign uh, over a sexual harassment scandal, um, was an open seat. There was a special election, and the Democrats have held on to that seat, which means they'll keep their very, very slim majority in that chamber. Um, obviously, there's a lot more we could talk about, So, and these results will be updated throughout the day. So you can always check vote.phila.gov or electionreturns.pa.gov if you're curious and want to see how these races that haven't been called yet are evolving. For sure. Now that the primary election season is over, we have to gear up for the general election in November. Uh, We'll talk more about the election, the results in this week's Friday News Roundup. But before we go, how are y'all decompressing (laughs) from all this election coverage? I'm very excited to walk through the park and not get a text message unwarranted from some random candidate. That will be lovely. (laughs) Yes, I'm excited to have people not knocking on my doors. It was like Mm -hmm. every 20 minutes. Really? People knocked on your door? So many people with various levels of enthusiasm for the candidate they were representing were knocking on my door. (laughs) Interesting. Oh my gosh. How about you, Trinae? Um, I'm going to sleep. I'm going to eat. Maybe eat, then sleep. Um, (laughs) It'll be interesting. I actually can't wait for the next election. Um, And I'm looking forward to seeing how many people turn out for that one. Yeah, Mm -hmm. we'll see. Totally. All right, producer Abby Fritz and lead producer Laura Benchoff, thanks for joining me this morning on CityCast Philly. Yeah, woo, we did it. Thanks for having me, Trinae. All right, check out the Hey Philly newsletter for other news and events happening the day after Election Day. We'll have a link in our show notes. That's all for today here on CityCast Philly. If you enjoyed this episode about the primary election results, share this on your social media, rate the show, leave us a review, and hit that subscribe button. Be sure to sign up for our morning newsletter too. It's called Hey Philly. We'll be back tomorrow morning with more news from around the city. Bye. Bye.